Hey there, and welcome back. Today I am in Gilbert, Minnesota, and I am at the Iron Ridge Off-Road Park. This weekend is the North Star Rover Rally, so it's all Land Rovers here this weekend. I have never been here before, and here is a map of the grounds. This place looks absolutely huge. Right now I am next to this place that says Vehicle Wash, so I'm actually not in the off-road park yet. We're going to go across the bridge across those tracks and then we will be in the off-road park so i'm just waiting for the other land rovers to show up and then we're going to hit the trails i've never been here before so i'm going to do an easy trail first looks like they have five or six different routes set up from easy to hard i just got back on a one week long off-road trip with a few land rovers i think that video will come out after this one so you'll just have to wait and see how my truck got into the shape that it is right now. This is the first time I've seen another trophy when I've had mine out and about. Of course, during the competition, there was many of them all together. It's one of the truck trucks. This is the Trek 130 from the competition last year. All right, I just ran into Lost Cause Ranch if you haven't seen their channel, they do uh, pretty much exclusively Land Rover content. Is that correct? That is correct. Mostly. We dabble in some other stuff here and there, but it is predominantly Land Rovers. Yeah, so if you want to see more Land Rover content, check out their channel on YouTube. Starting to get the Land Rovers in now. Lots and lots of discoveries here. A couple Range Rovers there. There's a few Defenders and Series, but... I would say the discoveries are definitely the majority here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna hit the trails for the first time now. Interestingly, the discovery in front of me is a diesel. You don't see those very often, here in America at least. These trails are pretty tight and narrow. You can see how things in the Midwest differ so much from things out West. These trails are very tight. The trees are right next to you. There's not a lot of room to maneuver, so you're not getting big trucks down these trails. Looks like we get some mud here. I was told at certain times of the year, some of the water crossings here will be up to your hood.
the Range Rover that was following me on the trail. Bat the alternator went out and the battery is dead. So right now we are charging it off of my truck. It, it won't do anything at all right now. Battery was down to 7.4 volts. So we're gonna let it charge for a little bit. There's plenty of other things to see around here while this truck is charging. Uh, the Rebel Rally staff, uh, there were 130 competitors last year, there were 135 staff members keeping us safe. It's a big rally. Um, there's a base camp that travels with us. Last year there were three base camps and two marathon self-camp nights. Um, base camp includes the big communal tent where we're eating our meals and plotting in the mornings. Uh, it includes uh, food provided by a Michelin star chef. The food is very good. So good. Uh, they feed us breakfast, they feed us dinner when we get back, when we have base camp. When we don't, we're cooking for ourselves out on the trail. Usually the uh, So we've got potties, we've got showers, we also have mechanical support. Uh, they want every car to finish the rally. Those mechanics, headed up by Nick Simmeristi, if you haven't listened, he came on the podcast on um, Underpowered Hour a couple months back, two months ago, uh, and he talked a lot about what it takes to be a mechanic for the Rebel Rally and what kind of failures they tend to see. Tire punctures are heads and tails, the most common failure. So that last year, last, year was last year, almost every single team went through at least one tire. The whole axle housing was out of that car. It was insane. And Nick, like, because they have technology, they can phone a friend. He called somebody and said, can anybody go to my workshop and bring me this Jeep axle housing that I know I happen to have, and they brought it in overnight, and they had that car back on the road the next morning. Battery charger worked. He got the Range Rover started. He's going to take it back to camp. So they have, I think, six or seven of these competition areas set up. You have to go in between the poles without hitting them, and you also cannot come to a complete stop. You definitely cannot use your brakes and come to a complete stop. You must be rolling the whole time and not hit any poles. We're going to give the same instructions at the start so that you can hear them now. Low range, mandatory low range. Okay, we don't want any speed on this. This is as slow as possible. And the only time you might be fast, quote unquote, is if you need a little bit of welly to get over something. You are watching for the following. The pole wiggle, right? We are watching for a stop. So if somebody comes to a stop, at a gate or before a gate they are penalized because you're not allowed to stop you're not allowed to reverse you can't reposition yourself all right so we're watching for the stops brake lights are a good way to look at that the brake light might mean that i'm just putting a little bump on which is fine but you're looking for a full stop so they're not allowed to full they stop. are not allowed to full stop okay there will be one exception i'll get to in a moment okay. He's, he's, oh. 
jumping it. Let's go. Uh, he, he shot? He, he, YouTube stuff. Y'all shot? It's, it's, it's worth a look. I think I think he just tried to carry that line too high. Right. No, with the sand, you can't be pulsing like that. Right. Tires up in the air, which is the, the D2s are all picking that driver's front up. Right. It's pretty cool. Thank you very much, Rick. Front. Copy. So they've been sneaky it looks flat over here but they've dug these holes next to these flags to make you push yourself into them so as he gets near here his truck's going to lean towards that pole and it's likely going to hit although this is one of the skinnier vehicles went through it safe so you're not penalized for coming out here making a circle and then getting a different angle. So that's what they're attempting to do so that they can get straighter at this gate here. Looks like it's wiggling. It may have hit it. And they downed one over there. And another one. All right, at your slow, steady speed, I would recommend just a torquey um, rather than trying to go fast. Yep, okay. Nice, steady power here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these new defenders don't have uh, a fully folding in mirror, so if the mirror hits, we're not going to have I'm doing pretty good so far. This one has a bunch of mud and water crossings within it. That's pretty neat. Remember, don't hit the outside. You got a ton of room inside, inside, straight through, straight through. Keep going straight, keep going straight through, straight through. Very nicely done. There we go, a little jog, 11. 
Just straighten out, straighten out, straighten out, straighten out. To your right, to your right. Straight, 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 straight. Yep. Cut it hard, cut it hard. Go up the hill, cut it hard. Right up ten. Very nice thing. Cut it, cut it, cut it. Going up the hill. Turn right, turn right, turn right. Right. Just continue yep. up there. Yeah, yeah, scorecard. Yeah. All right. Good job. Yeah, ten. I like the truck. So once I uh, just go up the hill, stay wide right, and immediately put a sharp, sharp left. All right. Coming up. Beautiful. Six. Good to go. Fenders don't have uh, a fully folding mirror, so if the mirror hits, we're not going to count. 19!
Very nicely done. raining now so everyone's kind of hiding underneath the shelter as much as they can good time for lunch weather is moving in very quickly so we need to get this done because I think we're gonna need to get out of here very soon and the weather has just roared in within it's probably only been a minute and it's just getting crazy out here right now and it's not stopping. I definitely recommend coming to the North Star Rally. So if you want to do this next year, look it up. I was only here for one day, but this event has been going on for a few days. So there's plenty of time for you to come here, hang out, hit the trails, and have a bunch of fun with a bunch of other Land Rover owners. I'm going to get inside now. They do have an awards dinner tonight, and it is held at the lodge. A very, very nice hotel here. What a great way to finish a, a wonderful event. This deal is fantastic. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. So, I'm sure everybody sees the little Anarch emblem out there on the different uh, banners and, uh, and signs. Uh, and I'm, there's a lot of questions about what is an Anarch. Um, we're all very proud, the Anarch folks here, that we are part of this event. Uh, working together uh, with other clubs to promote events. Uh, that's what Ann Arbor is all about. Fellowship, helping clubs uh, to bring the best in the Land Rover experience to its membership. That's what we do. Uh, it's, a, it's a teamwork. We work with the club, helping them with their events. Uh, not only does Ann Arbor help clubs individually, but uh, we bring uh, clubs together, we speak with one voice. We're able to uh, help keep trails open in, in the North American area by working all together. Because we're a large North American organization, we have some clout. So we're able to, to work with organizations like Tread Lightly to help keep public lands open.
the trials course. I understand this may be one of the first times we've been able to have this here. We are thrilled to be asked to do it. I want to thank you all. Just a, a few words about Charlie. Charlie worked, was one of the primary members that worked to get this, this park open. Right, so he yeah. was like very instrumental in getting this park open. And, and, and there's an actual picture of him in the education center. If you, ever, if you back there today, if you walk in, it's on the, the right hand side, I think. There's a picture of him pulling out an ATV with this, with his opening around the world. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, and then we'll talk about the club later. But. So, I grew up in the, uh, in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, watching um, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Yeah. So, yeah, Marlon Perkins is out there driving around with his handyman, Jim. Yeah. You know, and they were, you know, castrating elephants and, and you know, doing other things with rhinos. And I'm like, I got to give you one of them. I would ride around with them as I was growing up. Well, it just so happened, uh, the first farmer I worked for um, had a series line roller. And I'm like, this, is, this was meant to be. <laughs> so for the first year, I worked for the farmer. I was 14 years old. And then on the second year, he said 15, and he decided he was going to sell the land And he told me, he goes, you know, this needs a lot of work. We're going to have to sell it. And my heart just dropped. I'm like, no, this is mine. You know? So that night, I drove it home. So I stole my first Land Rover. <laughs> 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 I 